So this next session is going to be absolutely wild, everybody. These guys are absolutely incredible. I'm grateful to get to call them friends, colleagues, and they're just going to bring so much energy. They got spinning wheels. We got people coming in from outer space, tuning in and doing conversation. No, he's coming from Canada. But you guys, like, I'm just not going to delay this anymore. I got to introduce the host for this session, Joel. Joel is absolutely incredible. It's going to lead you on a wild journey. Joel, come on. Let's get you up on stage and let's make some noise for Joel. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our session today. Uh, I'm going to quickly introduce our special guests. First of all, Mahogany Jones coming on stage. Hey, everybody. And tuning in all the way from Vancouver, Canada, is Sean. There's Sean. Hi, awesome. everyone. Well, I, I heard he's the last one. So oh, he, he even has Timbits. Um, yeah. How many of you have Hi, had Mom. Tim Hortons? This is oh, a, that's a good, a good amount. All right, okay, cool. For winning. Very, very cool. All right, so um, you've all um, just, why is my, there we go. Okay, a, gold, a cold blast from the past. We're going to be looking at the good, the bad, and the ugly of event tech. Um, what we basically want to um, accomplish through this session is uh, an understanding of past trends and technologies in our industry, um, how they've evolved over time. So we're going to go through a number of different event tech, as you can see, on the wheel of event tech. We're going to spin that wheel. And we're going to get Mahogany and Sean to pipe in on their opinions on whether this event tech or that event tech is here to stay, whether we should keep it under the rug or we should carry it into the future. And don't worry, there is some audience participation as well. As you can see, there are a few slots on the wheel that say people's choice. If it lands on people's choice, we're going to be calling out to the audience to see if you have a particular event tech that isn't listed on here that we can add in and get some opinions as well from everybody. Anything to add, Mahogany or Sean? First off, did we actually introduce ourselves? No, we didn't. We did oh we my goodness. Steps, okay. but... I'm sorry. Very Canadian of us to say I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, All Mahogany. Right. So I'm Mahogany Jones. I'm the founder of Event Specialists. We are based in Toronto, but we do have a team mem few team members in the U.S., and we are here to bring the fire and also the ice. Right on. Sean. Hi, everyone. This is Sean Chen calling from Vancouver, Canada. I'm just here to hang out. <laughs> he, he, he hacked his way in to the session. <laughs> right on. Good to see you, yeah. Sean. <laughs> The one thing I, I, I was too late. I, I was too lazy to put out the pan, so I decided not to come. But I'm kind of a little sad right now because a lot of the FOMO. We miss you too. Uh, and I'm Joel Olandeska with Simple AR, based out of Calgary, Canada. Uh, we do web-based augmented reality in events and experiential marketing. Shall we get on with it? Before we do that, let's just yeah, do let's a do little it. bit of of positioning of what event tech is. So over the years, we've seen we want all the things tech. We want every platform. We want every technology. We want every engagement strategy. We want every tool. So we are going to talk about quite a few of those. But we want you to know that some things that were deemed event tech are not necessarily what you'll see from the wheel, aren't necessarily what we're actually looking at as tech point. today. Yes. All right. Anything else? Okay. So as you can see, I'm going to click spin, it's going to spin, it's going to land on event tech. And we have allotted two minutes per, per, per tech. Can we just say ET? Here's our first one. While it's spinning, any fun tech that someone can name that they find doesn't exist anymore in events? No? I was going to say, we had a whole conversation. We could name we, for We days. did. We read. That's how this all came up. <laughs> we were sitting around one day and said, what happened to this? What happened to that? The Vodi. That's right. The ARS systems that you had on site. Oh, okay. That's yes. That's a good one. Yes. 
All right, where did we land? It landed on immersive technology, virtual reality. Ooh. I'm starting my timer. Sean and Mahogany, you have two minutes. All right, Sean, let's go. Immersive technology. Well, I, mean, I, I think VR is still, is still there, but it used to be, I remember a couple of years ago, it was supposed to be the, the place and everyone will have the AR, VR glasses. You just don't think that way, at least right now. What do you think, Malcolm? How many remember the VR novels and the VR headsets at every event we went to? We would have a booth that we would set up and we would all play the VR games and no one ever really understood the point of that being part of the event. But yet we knew it was fun. So I feel like now we're getting a little bit more, we'll say, focused on how to incorporate these technologies into the event so that they're part of the experience versus just being an afterthought. Okay, I'm going to open up a can of worms yep. for you to metaverse. Any comments? I have to defer to my well, children. Maybe I'll, I'll, <laughs> and you go I will also defer to Sean. Well, I, I, I still think metaverse will, uh, will, become, will play a big role in the future, but probably just not right now. Um, but I do say, though, I think, and that, that's actually, I think, throughout the, the, the next 40 minutes, you're going to see a lot of the things that maybe not a trend anymore, or maybe not being taken off as what we think it will be. Some, somehow, eventually, they might be. Sometimes it's just when you will be, when you will be there. Sometimes it's faster, it's faster, sometimes it's slower. I think for virtual reality, we definitely see a little bit more slower take. It might be because the infrastructure, the internet needs to be taken. Um, but, you know, it's like artificial intelligence, right? Like it becomes such a big topic right now and everyone seems like using it. Um, but artificial intelligence has been around for almost 20 years. And, you know, it's kind of like now you finally become a thing. So who knows? Okay. So that's two minutes. Any final thoughts before we move on to the next one? I will say there is place for some things. Um, we have seen the concerts in Roblox. We have seen the concerts in Fortnite, things like that. But I do feel like, again, tying to demographics, who your audience is, where you can meet them. We have seen AGMs start to be produced there. The only thing that I defer to is that I am not a metaverse ex expert because I like event tech. So we defer to the experts. Awesome. We go, ah, the right, let's move on to the next one. Here we go. I mean, where we're spl splitting, though, I do need to say, like, I mean, for we VR specifically, I think a lot of people are using, you know, the supernatural, right? Like, they're using VR for workout. So it is coming up. True. Yes. Okay, it landed on people's choice. Does anybody have an event tech from the past 10, 15, 20 years? that they think should either make a comeback, should stay where it was, or we should just continue to use it? Anybody? Yes, up front. Bluetooth scanning, passive scanning. Sean is- That's a good one. Sean is, he likes that one. Hey, Sean, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I like it. And then like, to, I think Bluetooth will, will I think so, in some, some, sometimes in the next, I don't know, a couple of months or even a couple of years, Bluetooth will come back in a big way, like what QR code did. It just, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a low tendency. It's right now, everyone have their phone, have the Bluetooth capacity. I think it will play a big role. Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a timing thing, right? Because Bluetooth is integrated mm -hmm. into almost everything we use. Phones, watches, computer, everything, cars, everything. So yeah, I think you're right, Sean. I think it's just a matter of it's time. And a lot of, a lot of the tech that we are looking at, it is time. Like it started off very small and now it's huge in our industry. What would you say is the ideal use case for Bluetooth? Ideal use case for Bluetooth. Any thoughts? Well, I think exchange, it's almost like right now, you know, you have, you use the iPhone, you can do airdrop, right? I feel Bluetooth had that, still had that potential eventually. You can exchange something really fast. I think it will be massive 
helpful for a trade show like this, for example. Yeah. I mean, uh, I guess I often think of it as uh, just passive scanning. So the the idea of pairing like Bluetooth being more effective than like long range RFID, which is more easily disruptive. You know, it, a Bluetooth allows tracking people without necessarily having to stop every person at every little point and say, can we scan your badge? Right. So that's kind of the, the mm -hmm. Bluetooth youth use case that I've been thinking about. But I think right now it typically requires an additional attachment to a badge or to, you know, it's something else to pair unlike a RFID or a, you know, QR code that you can put on the badge. So. All right. Thank you. All right, back to the wheel. I don't know how Sean's looking. <laughs> Sean looks like Sean was looking for the wheel too, but. I actually have the screen open so I can. Oh, you do? Uh, okay, good. It up. I do, I do, I do. Okay, it's landed on AI chat bots. Oh. Here we go. Two minutes. Who's up? Oh, okay, how about you go first? <laughs> the lovely chat bots that were everywhere. The AI chat bots before chat GPT. I will say they were on every app. And then we would also have the, um, I remember picturing a female version that was on a lot of the events, but they used to get all of the content wrong. Like remember trying to program that and sitting there to put in, this is where your event room will be, this is where all the details are. And then it'd be a touch screen that you would go up to, press it in and there would be an automatic chat happening at the events. Personally, I feel like if we can make it work a little bit better and actually work to program it so that it can give our proper responses, then yes, absolutely. I feel like that's a tech that's here to stay. Chat GPT is a great example as to how we can make it work for us. I think we just need a little bit more programming so that it speaks what we need it to speak. Rather than it being really just a, a, an FAQ is the way they've been set up, right? Sean? Yeah, because I think, um, you know, like before Chat GPT, uh, a lot of the AI chat box that are not really AI they are really just fixed programming uh, info chat, basically. And, and so I think what will be very exciting to see if any of the new development coming in with, uh, with generative AI, it's been massive developed. Like almost every day I heard a new company coming up. You know, it's like, of course, 90% of them are going to be garbage, but hopefully something would then, would, would then really pushing this. Because I think the whole concept of you can open your phone and ask a legitimate question about the event and get the really quality answer from it. It still have that value of it. And then you can combine that with, uh, you know, with, uh, with a directional interactive map uh, or the matchmaking, you know, I think earlier on, um, John was on, um, you know, like, so then that would make the whole experience into a next level. And I think one of the things on the wheel is the event mobile app, right? And that would, that would then really make the event mobile app to become the next level of app rather than the, you know, the app that we know right now. So I think to summarize on AI chatbots is it, the tech is here, it's here to stay. It just needs to be improved in terms of how it interacts with us, the functionality. And I would, All right. And I would say, if you are, if you are in the space, like I hate, I think a lot of people might sit in the room right now are in the event tech space, then, you know, this actually should be the area you should look into, right? Like it's going to be a very competitive, but this is the area you should look into because there's a legitimate user case here. Yeah, definitely keep your eyes out on AI chatbots because there is going to be some advancement. All right, back to the wheel. wheel music. I know, they're supposed to be, but well, oh. that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting you to a sing though. So oh, I, my, like I like this one. <laughs> Microphone alternatives. For example, Catchbox and CrowdMic. We've heard of those two examples. Yeah, familiar with those? Okay. Can, we, can we have like a raise of hand? Anyone here about, I think everyone here about Catchbox, right? Yeah. But how yeah. many of you heard about Chrome? About what? I have to repeat it. Like the Chrome mic. Any of you have you heard about Chrome mic? Some of you have. Some of you have. So in a nutshell, Crowd mic allows you to download an app so that you turn your, your smartphone into the microphone. Cool, 
Really cool tech. All right. Yeah, so those are both of them are perfect oh example God. back in uh, actually 2015, 2016. That was the time that like the the innovative microphone solution everyone's talking about. It. Everyone hate the handheld mic. Everyone wanted to come up with something new. And uh, then then some of them stay, like Catchbox is still still here, but I don't think they are taking over the traditional microphone as they, they're hoping for. I feel like the strategy behind CrowdMic and the, the box, catch box, the yeah. catch box, was really around collaborative efforts and not having to have those mic runners. So to me, the technology made sense. It allowed us to do what we need to do better and more efficiently, which I believe all event tech should do. It is meant to make our events better. It is not meant to make our events harder. And yeah, if, and I think and if, okay, it's like it, in Catchbox wise, like uh, I think Catchbox is actually still exists. And, and, it does, and yeah. They, they've been yeah. Wildly, a lot of a lot of wildly, venues wildly popular. Yeah, in the education space, from my yeah. understanding, right? Yeah, my understanding is a lot of venues actually are the ones that that run them and have them. And then they became the sponsorship opportunities. Right. You could buy the shell that goes around the Catchbox, or you could bring your own. But, okay. but here is actually a catch by the perfect example of uh, it, it, it was inventing to solve a certain challenge and problem, but then create a new problem. Because um, like I see first starting with, oh, you need something you can, you know, replace mic runner, right? Then it's more interactive, more engaging. Um, but then it, it, once you start having it, it, come, it coming all the, all the cleaning issue, all the health and safety issue. Mm. Uh, and then, because then, and then I think a, a few different events I went lately, they have catch box, but people actually tend not to using it because they actually have other issues that become not that as, you know, that's so, what they so want. So you're sort of avoiding it's it when it's coming at you? Yeah, How many people have been hit by a catch box? I don't want to touch it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. You should sing the music next time. I, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, facial, facial, facial check-ins. Two minutes on the clock. How's the, how's the coffee, Sean? Well, so I had a double-double. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, uh, Tim Horton is very famous for very sweet and bad coffee. Um, that's why you need to add a lot of sugar in the, in the milk. So it was a very traditional Canadian thing. That's pretty good. Thanks, are you actually thanks, sitting Bradley. in a Tim Hortons as well? Is that what? Exactly. Are you in a Tim Hortons or? He is. <laughs> I think he is. Okay. He understood the assignment. Okay, yeah. Okay, so um, what was it? Oh, facial so recognition. Facial yes, recognition. facial recognition. Mahogany, you're up. To be honest with you, just like a lot of technologies, it was very hard to find the early adopters. I, I can only speak for myself, but I know I remember hearing a lot with, I do not want my face scanned for anything. I don't want this, I don't want that. How many people use Clear at an airport? How many people use the other technologies at the airport? So I feel like once we can define the technology and its use case and why it's valuable, it might be a little bit easier to understand in the event space, but just like some of the other apps and technologies we'll talk about, same applies. We were very afraid. We feel like our information is being taken, but truth be told, we know you're here. We know you're in. So facial recognition isn't necessarily, in my opinion, mm -hmm. I feel like it makes things a little bit easier. Do I think it's necessary? I feel like it's added tech that's not always needed for this use case but there definitely is a use case for it. Yeah, uh, there, there are a couple. So Zenus, for example, has a booth. Uh, Field Drive is an, another good uh, uh, exhibitor to check out. So the, they're both incorporating uh, the facial recognition. And I spoke with them just before coming on here. And what I learned for, for those of you who are afraid of your photo being kept is um, Field Drive, for example, told me that once you've submitted your photo so that it gets red and all the points on your face get red, that photo actually gets deleted. So your, your photo is not on their system. Uh, it's all, the only thing that it's marked there are the points on your face for the recognition piece. Sean, anything to add about facial recognition? 
Yeah, I think facial recognition, uh, is, I think it's that, exactly like what Phil Dry is saying. I think a few other companies do similar uh, solution that they, they, they went exactly the same route, which they are not, not, they are not keep your information. They're really just using the NF identification purpose. And, and therefore, there is a legitimate user case, especially for registration, right? Like, I, I know that, like, um, I think a couple of weeks ago when tech conference in Vancouver, um, they have, they, they're still using that solution, which is that really adding on that whole personal, personalization and also the feeling you, you are special, that type of moment and experience. Like, I, I remember uh, one of the guests I saw that who, who, who uh, just walk on the venue and then just passing on the scanner and then just a few few steps back and her badge is ready with her name on it. And it's just it's that kind of uh, efficiency and somehow personal touch, I think will we'll, we'll definitely add a different layer for the experience. And it's definitely here uh, to stay, especially like Hong when you just mentioned, right? Like clear app, like all the, all the like transportation is starting to adapting it, whether you like it or not. Yep, absolutely. Okay, that's facial recognition. Next one. Don't forget to sing. <laughs> oh, people's choice. Okay. You've had some time to sit here for a bit, listen to us. Are there, does anybody out there have one to add? Event tech, current, past, or future? It's okay if you don't. We have other choices on the wheel that we can go to. Nobody online? Sorry? Second screen. Second screen? Second screen, Ooh. Sean and Mahogany. Sean, I'm going to go to you Did, first. Maybe, with, oh, maybe we should explain what that is first. Before, for those that don't know, go ahead. Go ahead, Sean. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you because all I'm thinking is Slido. But yep. I mean, I, I, oh yeah, like I, the Slido is exactly the perfect example, right? I think, I think they are still very popular. Though. Like it used to be, it, it was such a new thing a couple of years ago. But then I think because of the pandemic, uh, when in a fully virtual setting, second screen become almost essential. And then now we just really get used to it. And now we getting back into uh, a, a more normal, uh, no kind of normal, normal environment, and a lot, I'm just really happy and glad to see a lot of the tech company that still keep the second screen function in there. Like for example, like I'm I'm in Vancouver, but I participate in the show virtually with Hugh below, and they have the second screen, um, so that that really helped. I don't know if that that's kind of what the definition that you're aiming for. But no, that's great. What do you start, yeah. I would say it's really being able to see content while things are moving ahead. Um, but I would mm -hmm. defer to the AV people a little bit more on second yeah. screen. What are your thoughts? I, you, don't do, you don't have a microphone, but I can run over to you so you can, we can get your <laughs> thoughts on it. So I, I think it does help with engagement, right, with the audience, right? Yeah. So uh, it's not just what's being displayed on the screen. It's also the giving them the ability to take notes inside of that application. And then also um, being able to either download or take that content home in a, in a, in a, uh, you know, a personal way. So, I like it. Our timer's going off. Right on time. I, I also want to just, just apologize. Stop. If you see me doing weird hand gesture, it just be, because a will keep bringing people to the screen in front of me, so I need to say hi to them. <laughs> <laughs> so just, Thanks, will. I just noticed that that I'm on screen, <laughs> but then. <laughs> okay. All right, back to the wheel. Spinneroo. That's a good word. Okay, we have already done microphone alternatives. Couple good ones. I want the apps. Go so mobile apps. Hey, event mobile apps. Two minutes. And go. I was so excited for mobile apps. I know we use them for most things, but how many people, and we'll say this for all of our fellow planners in the room who had our clients look at us like we were crazy to say we wanted to use a mobile app because it was going to take away from the content in the room. It meant we have to now have information in more than one spot. It means we have to do all of the things. 
Now going to an event without a mobile app almost seems like it doesn't make sense. We're missing content. We don't know where to be. We're so dependent on our phones nowadays. I feel like the mobile app is definitely here to stay. It is not going anywhere. It is back in full force. Sean? Um, yes and no for me, uh, because I think at the same time, um, it's also uh, a lot of time I, I, I will accidentally roll my eyes that, oh, I need to download another app. <laughs> I think, uh, um, and that is, I think, the challenge right now for, for yeah. us as the event organizer. When we're thinking about the, the mobile experiences, how can you create, uh, how can you leverage the app function, but that not adding additional huddle for so create So creating like a web-based version, right? So web-based versus, versus yeah. uh, actually downloading it. Because I, I, I swear on my phone, I probably have Catersource TSEs, or I sorry, I have Event Tech Live, from London in November, still on my phone. Why? I don't know. But I just, I hoard that stuff, right? So it would be a lot easier if it was web-based. X out the web. Yeah, I mean, I think that, 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 off it goes. That's, yeah. kind of what, that's kind of what AI, again, like, you know, have a big promising here is the AI might be able to be the place who uh, be the solution to link everything yeah. together, right? So create a more seamless, uh, interface instead of you try to download things, um, then maybe is something already in your phone that you can just somehow align with the existing uh, feature that you already have. I don't know. So I, I feel there are actually a lot of more potential in the mobile app space coming coming uh, in the future. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we just need to outside the box. Cool. It also used to be very cost prohibitive. And I, if you remember the panic of HTML5 and were we going to be ready to develop for that? And I started, we started mm. to see more things being right. developed at that time. Mm. Again, intentional design would help us through. Agreed. Okay, back to the wheel. Our, our wheel is rigged. Immersive technology. We already did VR, didn't we? Okay. Here we go. Okay, here's the other one. Immersive technology, augmented reality. Thoughts? Why don't we defer to our expert? You're looking at me? <laughs> I mean, I, he may or may not own a company that well, does. <laughs> well, we, do, we specifically do web-based augmented reality and there's a reason for that is because nobody wants to download like we just said another app just to experience ar right so you can see where i lean towards um i think it's a technology that's still in its earliest forms it's it, ar has been around for quite a while it hasn't matured yet we're starting to see the potential for it we're all starting to get used to experiencing it because of the social media apps that we play with every day that apply augmented reality. So I think it's still at its very, very early stages. And over the next couple of years, we're gonna see a huge blow up around this technology. Sean? Yeah. I think AR, so argument and reality, I think, uh, I think we already, I actually think it's already the, the booming stage right now. The reason I say that is because um, um, actually right now, uh, I, I see more and more AR activation across the board uh, from our festival to a school promotion to, uh, you know, like uh, to, to, to a, even like a government announcement in some, some a bit more innovative department. So like I think AR actually become and just already become more and more common. Um, and so I don't think it's, 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 it's coming, it's here. Well, we we talked about this, right? Because the, um, the question that I threw out to the two of you and we were discussing this was, why is our industry not adopting AR as quickly and as much as the other industries that Sean just listed? And to be fair, part of that comes back to us planners having to be the ones to implement all the things. So I feel like understanding these technologies are coming, understanding other industries, but then also finding ways to find the experts who can help us put it into practice without having to be the expert in all the things. There you go. 
Okay. What are we doing for time? Okay, we're good. Ticket, ticket, ticket. Oh. Or should we just think, oh, Canada? Here's another one. <laughs> charging stations, charging furniture. Thoughts? It went from being, again, something that was a nice to have, very expensive to put in space. Now I feel like it's become a necessity. Charging stations, again, came out of a need, a need to keep our mobile devices charged when we now have mobile apps on site. So to me, charging stations are here to stay to some certain degree, but I also feel like it's a bit on its way out in the sense that we should know by now to be prepared. If not, there are companies we can call. Sean. I mean, I will, I will, I will say though, like, uh, I, like kind of just building on what you say that I think uh, charging station um, becomes such a popular thing for a few years. That was actually the time, in my opinion, when uh, smartphone become widely adapting into everyone's life. And when you switch from your Nokia to smartphone, the big difference is your phone suddenly, you know, run out of power all the time. Do you remember your iPhone 4 that you usually, you need to charge every two hours? <laughs> um, but now it's actually a different situation, right? I think right now, the, most of the smartphone had a longer battery life, I would say. Um, but also the, re the, the portable charger this day are also, uh, I will say dramatically cheaper and lighter, right? So it's actually most of the people actually have one or two portable charger with them. So I was actually not really sure like to have a fully charged furniture or charging station this day. Yeah. Um, I mean, they might still, they, they become still have the things nice to have, but they kind of don't have the importance as it was a couple of years ago, right? Because also the, I think there is another concern about the the, 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 the privacy things is there are a, a big concern at, at some point is if you charge your phone on your furniture, you know, you might create opportunities for the hacker to do something, or you might forget your phone. Actually, that was actually a legit concern a couple of years ago when I did the events that my client worried that like people will forget their phone when, yeah. when they do uh, charging furniture, <laughs> but they decide not to. Actually, that is actually a true case. <laughs> How many portable chargers does everyone have? Because they were the giveaway. They were the hot giveaway for a yeah, while. They're, yeah. they're like at the top of the swag list, I think. Especially if you get a really good one, you are holding on to that. Doesn't matter whose brand is on it, you're holding on to it. Okay, back to the wheel. How many questions we still have? I think we have about three or, three, three or four more. All right. Okay, we did that one. Click the wheel. Okay, beacons, beacon technology. Sort of similar to the, to the Bluetooth part of it. Yeah. This was another one that was also an issue when it came to privacy. Everyone's fear was, I do not want my information shared. However, we are seeing beacon technology with a comeback, and I will say in the exhibit space. It is a lot easier to sell exhibit space when you can say, foot traffic in this area has been X, Y, Z. We can see that we can watch how many attendees have been through a certain area. To me, I feel like beacon technology was underutilized and I'm glad to see it's coming back. I would like to see it make a bigger impact in the space, um, more than just the trade show experience. But that's my opinion. Sean, you're up. Yeah, no, I think it's exactly like what the Bluetooth situation is. Uh, it it, it becomes such a big topic, uh, I believe 2016 or 17. Um, but, but then actually I agree, yes. Like I think for now they are still really more, when you're talking about Beacon, you're talking about Tracial, right? Like you still haven't seen it, it be, become adapting kind of out of the Tracial space. Which I think another thing is I think for Beacon, like many of the technology we talk here today, they have been adapting into other industries quite quite well, 
right? I think I think airport are also using beacon technology for their own tracking purpose, not tracking, but like for their own analytics purpose. Uh, and I think so. You know, they 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 are here, and they they just might not be as trendy. You know, that's what they are. Okay, so that's beacon technology. I wonder if there's beacon technology here. That'd be cool to know. Okay, there is one left. I'm not going to bother spinning the wheel for it. The last one that we have on our list uh, is site visit robots. So site visit robots. Thoughts, Mahogany and Sean. I want to say the robots in general that everyone had for a while, that you could go to a show floor and you would see the robot and you'd be able to see, <laughs> either see someone. And then during the pandemic or just before the pandemic, how many people watched a session that had someone's face on a robot that ended up being part of the session? Now I feel like we see it a lot in airports, in events. However, have you seen the, the video that's going around of a certain event that had a robot handing out food that then broke and was no longer able to service that event? Yeah, I did see, yeah, I did see that video. <laughs> Yep. So I feel like, again, technologies need to be mindful of the audience, its implications, and why it's there. So. Okay. Sean, what are your thoughts on site visit robots? Robots in general, I guess, in the events yeah. space. We do have one in Vancouver, yeah, I, correct? Yeah, I think uh, it was actually the, around 2016 also, like I think... Uh, that is when the, the robots start rolling out and you have like almost like iPad on top of it. So people can then like you're calling like Zoom right now, but then you are actually on a robot and someone will control it so you can move around. Right? So you can attend the events or and, and you, it was it's still a good idea that, you know, it's a good way to do side visits. Um, but I think you just again, I think what pandemic did for us is we, we kind of all uh, Again, like our behavior got used to, uh, you know, like ju just the typical screen way, right? Like, so for example, for this one, you know, they, they didn't bring a robot to bring me on. We're simply just beaming in from a screen and kind of okay, because we kind of get used to, used to it. But I do like to say, like what McCoy said earlier, is the robot serving dream. I think I still see some user case that is the robot walking around and become almost like a, uh, like a like a, like a greeter, which you can interact with the robot, and you know you can using the robot to see what the next session is. Use the robot to kind of get some information about events. So you know once that combined with the AI chat box, for example, maybe there are again. So it's kind of like maybe right now they still seem a little bit far out, but once they con connect one or two key pieces together, you know they they might come back in a very different way. As for now, I think we are all happy to see real people, right? Right on. Okay, so that we, went, we just went through 11 types of event tech, plus the two, thank you very much. So we've, we went through 13 event pieces of technology uh, from the past, present, and into the future. Any final thoughts before we close it out? We have one very quick activity for everybody to be a part of before we get into it, but Sean and Mahogany, anything to close it out? The lovely should... delay, I was waiting. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I, I can go first. Uh, it's, I, I think uh, my, 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 my only takeaway is uh, be patient, but also be open. Because um, the, the trend that we just went through, a lot of them are coming back. A lot of them are still hot. A lot of them things not so relevant, um, but this might change dramatically just in a couple of months or a couple of years, right? So if you are in the event tech space, I think you just need to be patient. Things might pan out in the way that you want, but maybe just not the time that you're hoping for. But as the event organizer in the room, then I think we, we need to be open because this, the, the technology right now you see that are not relevant or might not important for you, for example, Metaverse, they might come in a very different way just in a couple of weeks or a couple of months or a couple of years. So, so I think for us, is, is we just need to remind ourselves that the thing that you, you kind of throw into the garbage bin, 
sometimes you just need to revisit it, like what we just did today, and then maybe you'll realize some of them are actually good for you right now. And to add on to what Sean said too, it's also listening to your audience and listening to your needs and then finding that technology that's going to help bring it together. But then also keeping an open mind to be collaborative, to work with others, to find someone who's an expert in that area that can help you implement it in your event, to find use cases. I feel like I know I'm guilty of it. I stick to industry events relevant to me, but maybe it's time to go outside the box and go to other, look to other industries and see how they're using the technology. Maybe there's a way to make our events even better than they are by looking to what's around us. Right on. Okay. We have a few minutes to do this. We're going to get you all out of your seats. We're going to do sort of a voting scenario here where this side of the room is to vote that the event tech that I call out is here to stay. And on this side of the, the floor is event tech, get rid of it. All right. So let's get everybody standing in the middle aisle, perhaps, and then split as I call it out. I mean, it's the last, it's the last session, so, you know. It is the last we, session. We, we, we like, may or may not workout. have treats. Just saying. We didn't travel with Timbits. Timbits don't travel well, but we did travel with something else. Oh, what's that? All right, we've got Canadian music playing. <laughs> <laughs> you want to call out the first one? The top. Beacons. Beacon technology here to stay it, or is it going? Or get rid of it. But wrong like you're on the hockey arena. Come it's on. like the herd mentality. Everybody was yeah. like, I'm gonna follow this. Oh, one. this is interesting though. Look at this. There's no. okay. All right, all right. All right, reset back in the middle. Who can name the I want someone take a photo of this for me. <laughs> Non-Canadians. Yay! Oh, there you go. Oh, okay. All right, next one is event mobile apps. Here to stay or get All rid right. of them. It Unanimous okay decision. To be on the there other we go. Side. You, you're, you're hesitating over there. Unanimous decision. Oh, Will, I see you. Uh, okay, next one site visit robots. Wow. That's surprising. I'm very surprised. So, Sean, can you see this? No, you can see this from where you are, right? Nobody wants event debate. robots. Everybody is over on this side. Everything. That's so cool. Okay, uh, next one we have. Go ahead. Choose one. LED wristbands. LED wristbands. Right? Our festival planners own that one. <laughs> What's a bis visible just a quite a company who do LED wristbands okay. data tracking? Back in the middle. Next one up is facial recognition. <laughs> oh wow <laughs> oh we have a few I want to chat right. with some people after this because I really want to know why you chose like either that. side this is interesting go ahead and mark me charging stations <laughs> you're in the middle we're indecisive oh we're in the split interesting oh. a little bit of a split you even took an extra step over some we're like, straddling the in. line <laughs> okay we'll do one more Go ahead. Yeah, did, let's do a live live tweet. Uh, we didn't go over this one, but that's okay. You know what? This is a good oh. one. Yeah. Live tweeting at events. What about Twitter? Period. Right. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Live that's tweet, that's pretty. That, that's fair. Job, by the way. All right. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our session today. Uh, make some more noise for these guys. Live. Come on.